David Estrada they need to break the other in order to find that golden opportunity again. Kermit Sintram boy wants to prove that he's come a long way. The last time we saw him it was a wreck. Lost his perfect mark shattered his dreams and his stellar career was sent offline. In the case of Margarito and Cintron, the punching machine against the hardest puncher. He is not steady on his feet, and now he's on a knee. It's not just hey. the physical damage, it's no. the body language. Look at it. He's fight? not here. He's not only hurt, he's badly discouraged. Five, Look six, at the way he's looking over seven. his corner. He wants his corner. No, that's it, Teddy. He that's wants it. his corner. He was Marvel. looking over. You saw the body language. He was looking over at the corner, looking for intervention. In my mind, I, you know, thought that I was going to win the fight. Um, but then again, you know, um, I look back and then I, I see that, you know, that I had problems and personal problems, you know, with my managers and trainers, um, you know, and then just having nine weeks, I mean, nine months layoff, you know, doing nothing because of my surgery that I, just, that I had and, and only having four weeks of training, you know, um, it wasn't, to me, it wasn't the right time, uh, you know, for the Margarita fight. I watched it a couple of times, you know, and uh, I see myself, you know, walking to the gym, to the ring, and you can tell it wasn't me. You know, I, my mind wasn't, my my mind wasn't there. My body was physically, I was there, but mentally, I wasn't. Third round, actually, uh, I believe that's when I got cut. Uh, I was so focused on, on uh, you know on that cut that I forgot everything else. You know, um, I forgot that I was in the fight. You know, I forgot that I was, you know, fighting for a world title. I was, you know, I was, I was hurt. You know, I, I just couldn't believe that, you know, I lost, you know, um, to a guy that I knew that I could beat. I learned, I learned that, uh, you know, uh, fighting for a world title, is, is, you know, is, it's just, it's not about just, you know, um, Training for a fight, uh, or just a regular fight, you know, uh, fighting for a world title, you know, you, you definitely have to, you know, train twice as hard uh, if you want to win. I, I have a, uh, a new team now, you know, I got rid of the uh, negatives, you know, now I'm, I'm working with, uh, you know, professionals now. I believe, you know, training with Matt and Stewart, you know, it's, it's one of the best things that ever happened, you know, in, uh, in my boxing career being able to train with a professional, not an amateur. You know, I, I had to, I had to change, you know, um, like I said, you know, I was unhappy. Um, I wasn't focused, you know, too much negative was going on with the old team. And it was just, you know, I thought it was, you know, the best thing to do business-wise. I just, you know, I'm, a, I'm an athlete, you know, I like to compete, you know, I'm really competitive and I don't like losing. Um, I'm not going to just, you know, lose and, and, and cry about it and just, you know, to this point and still cry about it, you know, I just move on, you know. Um, I lost to Margarito, with, you know, a champ. I lost to a champion, I didn't lose to a bum. 26 years old, happily married, father of a three-year-old little girl and the owner of unfulfilled dreams, 25 and 1. Tough numbers to deny, 23 knockouts. The buildup to the Margarito fight was some ride. His last five fights detail the work. He was on a streak of four knockout wins. He had torn down veterans Teddy Reed and Elio Ortiz, and then he ran into Tony Margarito. As for David Estrada, home ring edge for him, lives and works in nearby Miami, was born and raised Chicago tough, but he has that Miami style. He is outspoken. 27-year-old gives up a couple inches to Cintron. His record is 18 and 2. His last five shows the only two blemishes on his mark. Says he was sick when he took on the contender participant, Ishay Smith. He had a spectacular 11th, 11th round knockout of the previously undefeated Chris Smith. And then came the fight with Sugar Shane. So let's flash back to that ESPN pay-per-view April 23rd, 2005 from Caesars Palace. Estrada wasn't intimidated at all by the three-time world champion. He gave a very strong effort. Mosley able to utilize superior hand speed to box effectively. Both men tried to go to the body. Estrada felt like he was rallying late and wearing down Shane in spots. Here's how he sums it up. Every time I think about the Mosley fight, only good things come to my mind. Um, 
You know, we had a good fight. It was one of the toughest fights I ever had, and I had fun when I fought him, and it's just good to be able to say that I fought a living legend, you know, three-time world champ. And, um, but I wish it was a 12-round fight because I know if I had two more rounds, it would have turned out different. I always explode in the 11th and 12th round. And David said that he met up with Shane later in that year. They had a drink or two, exchanged memories of the fight, and he got a lot of respect from Shane Mosley. He would be well served to gain more than respect tonight. Needs a big win. As for how each fighter could accomplish that, here's Teddy's fight plan. Cintron is bigger, he's stronger, and he's longer. So it stands to reason that he's going to want to do a lot of work on the outside with Estrada, who's shorter and wants to get inside. So I'm going to be Cintron, so I will be Estrada. Cintron wants to use those long arms, keep him on the outside, set up the table with the jab, bang, look for the right hand. But look for his favorite punch, the right uppercut, because Estrada, as he comes in, leans a little bit, and that right uppercut, bang, can be really effective. Also, look at the elbows. They're out a little bit. Cintron might want to go to that body a little bit and catch something real clean. Either way you look at it, look for the powerful Cintron to use that power as Estrada tries to get inside. We already talked about Cintron. He's the longer guy. He's the stronger guy. He wants to be on the outside. Well, I'm going to play Estrada. He wants to be inside with those short arms working. But here's the trick. The danger is how does he get inside without getting caught by the big puncher, Cintron? Well, there's a couple ways. First of all, he can faint a little bit, get that punch out of the way, then he can get in. Another way is he can come in off the side door. He can come off either side door. Or he can just move his head on his way in and move his way in and then work when he gets in there. And that's the key. When you get in there, make him pay. Use those short arms, split the guard a little bit, go to the body, but don't go back outside. And he has a habit of doing that once in a while. Once you get inside, stay there, make the most of it, stay in close where you're safe with those short arms. Don't go back outside where Cintron can land the bomb. Kermit Cintron. Second fight since his TKO loss to Antonio Margarito. Didn't start boxing until 1999. David Estrada, last year he was co-trained and managed by Angelo Dundee. Angelo has taken a back seat because of his busy schedule. Now David's strictly working with Lewis Lagerman, and he feels very confident about that long-standing relationship. Talk about Angelo Dundee now, of course, not being with Estrada, and of course, Emmanuel Stewart now being with Cintron, but Emmanuel not here in the corner tonight. Away training Klitschko, so in the corner replacing Emmanuel will be Javon Hill. Hill. Yeah. His Let's go, turn around, turn around. Hey guys, right here, is it good here? Look down, right here, is good right here. You understand? God would take yourself at all times. Good luck, touch the luck. James Warren, your referee. The ring experience brought to you by Just for Men Hair Color. Very even matchup on paper, of course. You know, fewer knockouts, so Estrada has put in more time in the ring. 29 more pro rounds. Estrada hasn't fought since the Mosley fight last year. Cintron did have a stay busy bounce back fight. What do you make of uh, the, the mentality by Estrada to not fight since the Mosley fight, Teddy? Well, you always like to see somebody be active. It's been a year since Estrada's last been in the ring. I don't think that that inactivity ever helps you. But I understand it goes consistent with his temperament. He's a tough guy. He's a proud guy. He fights that way. And he's a guy that didn't feel he was being offered the proper fights. But sometimes you can cut off your nose to spite your face. And we'll see whether or not the inactivity has hurt Estrada. About if that. it had to be early, stop, Joe, because the power of Cintron can be most dangerous in the first four rounds, and maybe with the inactivity of Estrada, he could be vulnerable those first four rounds. Gaudy number just flashed up on the screen there, 92% knockout ratio. Kermit Cintron was viewed as this terror, this wrecking ball in the welterweight division. A guy who was so big as a welterweight was taking guys out. One punch, explosive power. And then came Tony Margarito and everything changed. Well, it's punch, about guys. more than ability. It's about more than power. You know, you know, that heavyweight, Audley Harrison, showed that. He's got plenty of size, plenty of power, plenty of ability, but it's about 
taking yourself and getting it out there being able to do it under pressure being able to be consistent behave like a fighter that's what it's about keep yourself together mentally persevere Sintron is hoping that he's taking a step towards learning how to do that better after that disaster with Margarita right now it's power and size and distance of Sintron versus the determination and persistence and free moving hands of Estrada. Indeed, a confident David Estrada with a left hook there. Tries to go for it again. See, Estrada wants to show, once I get inside past that power, I can let my hands go and I can take advantage of Cintron being taller and standing a little straight. And he's trying to take advantage of it by slipping to his left and throwing the left hook. Just watch Estrada doing a pretty good job of moving his head and getting inside. No doubt of that so far. But watch once he gets in. Sometimes almost nervous kinetic energy. He goes back out right in front. That's where he could have a problem when he goes back out in that distance that he's in right now where Cintron can yeah. do that. Get Land full, a right hand. And get full extension and show that power. Well, so far, it is as advertised. A lot to find out about each other. Both men willing to throw. Both men showing offensive advantages in the weaponry that they possess. Good opening round between Cintron and Estrada. That left hook in the first round, Teddy. Textbook, he slips the jab, gets a little closer, and throws the left hook. But Cintron keeping that right hand deflecting most of it very active first round for both men Cintron in the Puerto Rican flag with gold tint and Estrada in the black watch your with hands, gold watch your hands, trim. Guys. round number two they are scheduled for 12 we talk about the maturity and the growth of Kermit Cintron and having to overcome changes well he's been doing that his whole life I mean boxing is nothing compared to the personal hardships that he overcame when he was eight years old he lost his mother to breast cancer when he was 13 his dad suddenly passed away of a heart attack so this is a young man that's been through a lot in life he was adopted by an uncle in Pennsylvania was a star high school wrestler and then took up boxing as recently as 1999 well, as far as what's going on right here in the ring, Cintron wants to I'll keep grab, the strutter outside and try to make him pay for real estate. Make him pay by charging him punches, catching him punches as he comes in and tries to close that gap. Estrada, of course, wants to get in. But one of the things that would worry me if I was in the corner of Estrada, he moves his head coming in and he gets there, but then he comes right back out into the teeth of Cintron right back out there at the distance where Cintron wants him, where he can extend those punches. Simply put for Estrada, he's got to be in and stay there like right now, not go back out. Or when he's outside here, he's got to step all the way out. He cannot afford to be at the end of the jab like he is right now of Cintron, not in that no man's land, not in that danger zone. You saw that right hand was quick to come behind the jab from Kermit Cintron. Now they exchange on the inside. Cintron. There's that left hand again, Teddy. But the right hand up for Cintron. So taking much of that punch on the glove. They're not bashful, though, early on. These are two guys who don't think much of the other. They were together on the pay-per-view out in Vegas, cashing big checks last year, now squaring off for their boxing future here. You know, you might like what you see with Estrada letting those hands go, but I'd be a little nervous. He's letting them go a little reckless from a little far away. Maybe leaving himself like that, jumping in, lunging a little bit where he can leave himself open for a counter that Cintron is capable of delivering. You want to work your way in, bring your legs, work behind the cover of a jab, not jump in. There are spots where Estrada jumps in. You know, when you talk to him leading into this fight, you get the sense that he didn't have a lot of respect for Kermit Sintra. Now this reckless aggression kind of confirms it. Right now, Sintra doing a pretty good job of keeping that distance, Joe, getting off his punches at the right place and using his legs to step back and keep a gap that's good for him, bad for Estrada. Good pace being set here between these contending welterweights. The fighter focus on Kermit Cintron. 
began boxing at 19. Teddy, you often talk about the multi-sport athlete that takes up boxing. He was a high school wrestler, a great conditioning sport that preps you well for the fight game. As for David Estrada, the 27-year-old, his first fight in over a year since the Mosley fight, boxing's in the family. He got ready for this fight by sparring with the former world champion, Vernon Forrest, that was before Vernon Forrest injured his elbow. You know, sometimes different elements come into play. This one I'm going to touch on. If it comes into play, it won't show itself until a little later in the fight, but... We've talked about Centron training with Emmanuel Stewart. Of course, Stewart not here tonight. He's with Vladimir Klitschko. They were training in a camp in Mallorca, an island off the Mediterranean coast of Spain. Now, that's a good place maybe for Klitschko to train. He's fighting in Germany. I don't know if it was a good place for Centron to train, being that he had to travel all the way back here. If that travel bothers him, tires him, it'll show later in the fight. That's a lot of travel there. He spent some time up at the Kronk Gym in Detroit, then followed Manny over to Spain, and then came back down here to South Florida. And keep in mind, here in South Florida, this is the backyard of David Estrada, who works as a boxing and fitness instructor in Miami. And now trying to get those hands loose on the inside. Cintron tries to fire off the right, now working behind the jab, and fires off the uppercut that misses. If there's any kink in the arm of Cintron, there hasn't been many for the good fight so far. It's sometimes he does that. He stands straight up and pulls straight back. Stands tall. And that's where the punches can get in. And that's what Estrada is trying to do. Oh, uh, looping right hand landing. And here comes another left hook from David Estrada and just turning it up here against Cintron. Early and often, and you can see Cintron trying to tie up. And you can also see the attitude of Estrada trying to rough up Cintron. He figures that's the way to go, to test him inside, to test him in his core, to test him mentally, to get into a rough fight like he was with the Margarita fight, and to see whether or not he can handle that kind of tough fight, whether or not he can break him down and discourage him. And and now Cintron getting cut. off, yeah, above the right eye. You can see blood there. We'll try to get a closer look at it at the end of this round. But what an Come offensive on, surge. I mean, really just pure fighting from David Estrada. That's what he does best. He's a fighter. And he does get in there with his head like a billy goat a little big. And that can cause cuts sometimes. We don't know if that's what caused the cut over the right, near the right eye and the forehead of Cintron. Right hands. Well, there's distance, and when there's distance, there's danger for Estrada because Centron, when he gets a little so, so, distance, so, he gets so, the so, room so, to get so, extension so, on those punches again. Estrada doing a good job this round, but he needs to get in and stay there. Watch. Not go back out because when he goes back out, he eats leather. As he comes in there, almost ate a right hand, but keeps charging ahead. What a greatly entertaining third round this is. Right hand from Centron. The danger zone for Estrada is when he pulls out from the inside or he stands there in no man's land. Not all the way in, not all the way out. The danger Watch place for hands, Cintron guys. is when Estrada gets close and then Estrada catches Cintron going backwards, standing tall. Good exchange here as they close out this third round. Javon Hill and Dennis Turner working on the cut of Kermit Cintron. It opened up in the third round. What an offensive rally by David Estrada. Teddy just turned it on. He picked his spot, and his spots come when he gets in close. And here you can see he's in close, and then he's forcing Cintron to step out with a high way to him. And as he steps out tall, straight, Estrada knows he can do that. Tee off. Start of round number four, scheduled for 12 Wednesday night fights presented by Just For Men Hair Color. We'll be able to check in with referee James Waring after that third round, and he confirms that in his eyes, it was a clash of heads that caused that cut. So even with the offensive output of Estrada and the punches that were able to land, Cintron gets a break on the ruling from Waring. And there's a right hand. And then a left uppercut, a short punch on the inside. Well, Estrada having no trouble getting where he wants to get. In close. And Estrada will switch from orthodox to southpaw 
as he feels it will give him an advantage, all of a sudden chucking punches from different angles. What a pace he is setting, David Estrada. Hard to believe this will go 12 rounds with the pace he's setting. He's out for blood. He said it before the fight. I want him to stand there and try to trade with me. I want a fight. That's exactly what he's getting. Well, actually, what Estrada wants is to get into the heart of Central. He wants to find out how large that heart is. He saw a lot with what Tony Margarito may have exposed. That's what he thinks. And that is what is motivating Estrada right now to fight on the inside at a fast pace. He wants to simply test the worth of Cintron. Keep in mind, Kermit Cintron gained a reputation as one of the best power punchers in the welterweight division in recent years. There are the headshots. 280 thrown by Cintron, 213 by Estrada. They're landing in the 30 percentile. I say it again, the danger zone for Cintron. When Estrada gets in, then Cintron doesn't have an advantage of being tall. If he can force Cintron back, there's a tall target, and he can do that. He can catch Cintron as he goes back straight and tall. The danger plays for Estrada, and it's there. It's right there. When he doesn't get all the way in, when he stands in that no man's land at the end of the punches of Cintron, where Cintron can get full power, full extension on the punches. Now see, watch Cintron as he tries to keep Estrada at a certain distance. When Estrada does get in, look to see if he stays in. He's in, and then he goes back out. That's where suddenly the tables can turn right. on Estrada. One second he can be in close, doing good work. But the next second, without thinking about it, he pulls out like he is right now. And that's where, all of a sudden, Cintron can turn the tables on him with some power shots. Exerted a lot of energy, staying on the inside, good delivering in that third Cintron. round, and then here in the fourth round, one and out. Look for Cintron to start looking for maybe his best punch. He hasn't used it so far. The right uppercut. Something to look for when we come back. Well, in the tips tonight, we talked about the right uppercut of Cintron. Up to now, you hadn't seen it. But at the end of that round, not only did we see it, but Estrada felt it. So after a very strong third round by David Estrada, Cintron has a steady fourth round and is now ahead 39-37 on Teddy Atlas's scorecard. Let's look at the punch track headshots in that fourth round. You see Estrada landed 24, Cintron 22, but the best punch of the round was a headshot, the right uppercut from Kermit Cintron. You know what this fight comes down? We talked about height, reach, power, determination. It comes down to two things. Can Cintron handle the pressure of Estrada, keep himself together, not splinter, not fall apart, be a pro. We know he has ability, and can Estrada handle the power when he has to of Cintron? So far, he has. And so far, Cintron has handled the pressure. He has indeed. There's a certain calmness and coolness that we didn't see at all in Vegas. Keep in mind, this is the fifth round scheduled for 12. The last time we were sitting ringside discussing a fifth round scheduled for 12 with Kermit Cintron, he was breaking down physically, mentally, emotionally in the ring against Tony Margarita. Well, what happens after you go through that, if you're going to be the fighter that starts to climb the boxing ladder, is you find out that you could have controlled yourself better. You actually realize, instead of the negative, the positive, I could have controlled myself better. I didn't have to bail out and panic on myself. I will next time. That is what Cintron is trying to show, and he hurts. Estrada with a left hook. This is exactly what we talked about. Now the tables have turned, and the power puncher has his target lined up. A minute to go in this fifth round. And Joe, the power puncher had distance. He had to have oh, distance. Oh, but look at this, Teddy. Go Here right comes now. David Estrada. Estrada has his distance. He's in close, and that's where he needs to be. Because when he's in close, uppercut lands. He can catch Cintron not only to the body, but falling out and getting tall and being vulnerable. But the vulnerability for Estrada is right here. At the end of the punch, you could see Cintron measuring Estrada with, Strata with that jab. Not using the jab for damage, using it for a measuring stick to try to set up the right hand. So now another quiz on the mental puzzle for Kermit Cintron that we talked about before the fight. What will happen when Cintron realizes this guy's not going anywhere? 
Good combination there. He doubled up the left hand. David Estrada is tough as nails. The key right here is Centrone's been able to land his power shots, but it's been one shot at a time, not two. Wonderful fifth round here on Wednesday Night Fights. Let's listen into the corner of Kermit the Killer. That's how you work him, okay? That's how you work him. Get your breathing. Deep breath, let it out slow. Deep breath, let it out slow, big fella. Let's work, man. Let's work. That's Eddie, the fifth him. round. Right. Kermit Cintron. He had calmed down, he had settled in, and then he turned it off. And he always had the power, but he got the distance right there to land the left hook. Maybe Estrada looking for the right hand, and instead eating the left hook. Cintron keeping the pressure on Estrada, trying to make sure he keeps distance where he can extend those hands. Because when there's distance, it's favorite Cintron, but Estrada shows his worth and his toughness as he came back and got his distance in close and forced the taller Cintron into mistakes. David Estrada, 27 years old, went the distance with Sugar Shane. Said to himself, I wish I had two more rounds against the three-time world champion. I could have done some serious damage. Came in with a real true disrespect of Kermit Cintron. He said, I've never been, been beaten down. Cintron was. Well, this is a different Kermit Cintron that we're seeing tonight. But Estrada with the left hand again. And he's always game and always willing. Teddy Atlas' scorecard through five rounds as Estrada keeps coming forward. 49-46. What a determined effort in the start of this sixth round. There are the punch numbers. High totals in the fight so far for Cintron with a 41 landing. Look at Cintron using that jab, not for damage, not to score, but to measure Estrada. Look, just to keep him at a distance for that. There it is. And he says, bring me more, does David Estrada. Come on. Estrada How about can't that, afford, David? I don't care. You can't afford to eat those kind of punches before long. They will take their toll. And instead of one, it'll be two and three. Instead of being macho and stubborn, Estrada needs to get all the way out, out of that range where he's not getting measured by Centrone, all the way in. But not at the end of that pouring jab where you know the right hand is next. And there it is again. You see that pouring jab by Centron? He's using it for a measuring stick for that. A right hand upstairs or downstairs. And Triples it up that time. As soon as Centron knows he can touch you with that jab and get a full stop, length stop, on stop. that jab, stop, then he job, knows job, it's time job, for the right job. hand. He knows the opening's there. And he knows the distance is right for that. A good body shot. And we talked about that in the tips, that Estrada will leave his elbows out a little bit, Joe, and leave his body exposed. I think that can be something that Cintron, until now, has not capitalized on, but it's there for him. He can catch Estrada and hurt him in the body with those elbows being a little bit too forward. Look at the elbows of Estrada. They are out in front of him a little too much. Wide open. There's a stinging jab that time. That wasn't pawing at all as a range finder. He really nailed it there. Really solid round for Cintron. Now here's Estrada digging to the body. Let's see if he charges in again. He was spitting blood moments ago in this sixth round. You know, we talked about the danger zone for both fighters. Estrada creates his own danger zone. He gets in, does well, but then he pulls back out right into the wheelhouse, right into that distance, right into the end of the punches of Centrone. Oh, what a big Again. shot that was! There's distance, and there's a right hand connecting behind the ear because of that distance by Centrone. Estrada steadies himself, and look at the wind-up by Centrone. He at the is body. confident. Look at the body openings that are there, too. And look at the look on David Estrada's face. Davis preferred member Mike Plotzker. Welcome back to Wednesday Night Fights. What a main event it has been. Kermit Centron let it all hang out there in that six round and scored big at about the 15 second mark. Look at that body shot that came before the head shot. The elbow's out too far of Estrada and a good clean body shot with the right hand. There's the right hand to the body and then right behind it, there's distance and a right hand behind the ear throwing the equilibrium off in the legs of Estrada. 
Another right hand to open up this seventh round. You know Estrada's going to want to give the impression that he can take all night long, but there's no doubt about it. He was really stung badly at the end of that sixth round. Teddy Atlas's scorecard, 59-55. There's another body shot as the right hand lands, and the head shots, Cintrone landing 30 of them, 43% landed in that sixth round. But you know, right now, it's a double-headed monster that Estrada is dealing with. It's not just the head shots that we've seen visibly hurt him. It's the body shots. I cannot stress enough how damaging those right hands to the body in the last two rounds have been to Estrada. Just look at the arms of Estrada. He's starting to drop them a little bit to protect the body, especially on his left side, leaving an opening even more so for right hands by Centrone. There's that lined up right hand again, just using the left as a range finder and driving home the right hand. And getting help for that range by Estrada. We talked about it before the first bell rang. That Estrada needs to be in all the way out. Not there. Not in that no man's land. Not in that in between. Oh, left hand from David Estrada came out of nowhere. Well, he's got his opportunities. When he gets in close, he can take advantage of one mistake by Centrone. And that mistake is when the opponent gets close, Centrone doesn't get small. He doesn't get low. He stays tall, and he can be a target. And a right hand from Estrada. What a turn here in the seventh round. Well, you know what the turn is right here? Before pulling that jab out and using it as a measuring stick was serving Centrone to set up the right hand. Now Estrada's getting smart. He's throwing right hands over that extended left hand. Right there it is again. He does not go away. He's getting smart now. That extended left hand, instead of setting up the right hand for Centrone, it's leaving an opening for the right hand of Estrada. Wow, what a fight here. Give Estrada credit. Being hurt to the head, being hurt to the body, not only letting that punch going, but understanding mentally that the opening was there and he needed to throw that punch. That's a pro. That's a guy under fire who still keeps his wits, keeps himself together. And how about the guts of these two fighters with it all on the line? The career fork in the road, putting forth this kind of effort. See, so Joe, what can be an advantage one second can be your worst nightmare the next. The advantage of pouring with that jab for control. Now he's getting hit with right hands as he's pouring. Spectacular seventh round for Estrada. What a turn, Teddy. Yes, it was. Started with the left hook. As Centrone maybe thought he had all his way, all of a sudden eats a left hook, and then later on, Estrada, understanding that that left hand, yes, it's out as a measuring stick, but now I can throw my right hand over that measuring stick, and Estrada grabbing a round he so desperately needed. Four rounds to go. Kermit Centrone in the Puerto Rican flag with the gold tin. David Estrada in the black trunks. Centrone. The heralded prospect with the knockouts and the undefeated record until he ran into Tony Margarito. Estrada proved himself against Sugar Shane. Now in his backyard, meeting up tonight. Trying to drive that right hand again is Kermit Cintron. And here comes Estrada. Again, it's the same formula. This guy's like the ocean, Teddy. Good job, guys. Good job. Yeah, those waves keep crashing to the shore. And right now, the shore is a spot. Or the shore is Centrone. There's the mouthpiece, I believe, that just left the mouth of Centrone. Yeah, we're going to get a break in the action here. James Warren. And it comes at a good time for Kermit Cintron as they will tend to the mouthpiece, but momentum clearly with David Estrada after Cintron had dominated the middle rounds here. Landed a huge uppercut in the fourth round and a big right in the sixth round. Estrada was hurt 
in the fifth round and then turned things around in the seventh round. And again, what was working for him early was Cintron pulling with that jab, using it as a measuring stick, breaking the rules, leaving the left hand out there to set up the right. Right now, you see it again. He's paying a price for it because it's leaving an opening oh, for right hand. that danger zone, though, as he pulled back just a little bit and was right in the path of that right hand. And Cintron now holding on a bit. Yeah, but a good sign that time with the yes. right hand coming because you could see Estrada got his shoulder up to block it. So you see his reflexes are there. They're working. His eyes are clear. David Estrada just wants a flat-out fight. That's all he wants. This is just a tough, tough guy. There's a right hand from Cintron. But again, with all the heart, all the determination, all the persistence of Estrada, he's hurting himself by going inside and then going back outside, as he just did a moment ago. To stay in there with those right hands, and the left hook has been accomplishing a lot, too. Now, with that pawn jab, you know what's coming from Cintron. It's only a matter of time before the big right comes. And see, that time is the question, and that's the key. It's up to Estrada to get the right hand over that extended left hand before the right hand of Cintron does come. Again, the same thing. Estrada in close, does some good work, but let's see if he stays there. No, he falls out, and when he falls out, he's there. He's at the end of the punches of Cintron. Kermit Cintron, David Estrada, four rounds to go. Wednesday night fights brought to you by Just For Men Hair Color. Kermit Cintron, David Estrada, back and forth they go. Round number nine, they are scheduled for 12. Long jab, right hand will be coming down the chute at any moment. Cintron's done it all night long. Unless he gets beat to the mark by the right hand. That's happened too. With great success and more frequently in the past three rounds. Estrada able to turn this fight around. You know what you like if you're looking at Cintron? We liked a lot by both fighters. But right now you like Cintron keeping himself together, keeping that range, using his legs to keep that range, to be able to get distance on those punches. I think keeping himself together is a descriptive that Kermit Cintron wanted to hear going into this fight. That was a big question. That was the question that David Estrada put forth. Could Kermit Cintron keep himself together? Moving right hand and a four-punch combination. Two of them landing. Back to the inside where Estrada's done well. Goes with the left hand. Back out to range and tries to come over the top with that right hand again, Teddy. Again, two danger places for Estrada. On his way in, which he's done a good job, but then when he gets out, when he goes back out where he is now and stays right at the end of the punches of Cintron, needs to get out a little further, help himself, where he's really out of reach or he needs to do that. Get all the way in, but then stay in. Yes, Cintron has heard Estrada, but Estrada has been an accomplice in his own situations of damage. He has allowed Cintron to have the distance he needs by going back out after he's in to allow Cintron to fire away at him. Just had that distance for about a 30-second rip of jabs, and then Estrada was able to close the gap. And you see the warning from James Warren. Strata on the inside now, can let the hands go. And there you gotta give Cintron credit. Estrada where he wants to be, Cintron smothers him, walks him to the ropes, waits for the referee to break him, gets a little rest. See, it's up to Estrada, the shorter man now, to find the way. Rotate the shoulders back, take a step back, but find the way to punch. Cintron figures he's doing what he needs to do, smothering the smaller man inside and then getting outside where he can do damage. And a round in which he landed 24 jabs. Earlier 
tonight we mentioned the pace that the tough and rugged David Estrada in the black trunks was setting for 90 punches in the third round, 78 in the fourth, and was going all out, doing anything to get to the inside against the taller Kermit Cintron. In that 10th round, he threw 53 punches. That's his low total for the fight so far. Teddy Atlas' scorecard, 88-84. They went back and forth. That seventh round was spectacular when Estrada came back with the big left hand after Cintron had done such good work in the middle rounds. Right hand there as he ducked to the right side and was in the path of the punch. That's the wrong side to lay your head. Left hand, too. For the right hand punch. You don't lay your head on the right side. You're in the path. The punch is going right there of the right hand. Oh! And he eats two right hands. And, and he that hurt. is a knockdown. And again, there's distance, there's range, and there's power connect because of that distance and range with the right hand of Centrone. And a lot of time left. Look for Centrone. Oh, big shot comes in for Kermit Centrone. Putting his punches together. Estrada cannot defend himself. And he gets the stoppage. What a win for Kermit Centrone. Boy, did he ever need that. And once again, getting distance, getting range. Estrada, as game as he's been, did not stay all the way out and did not stay all the way in. When he did get in that in-between zone, at the end of the punches, he paid a price all night long, and the price was a little too heavy here in the 10th round. Wow, Kermit Cintron, the new team Kermit. He changed promoters, managers, trainers. He went to Spain. He went up to the Croc Gym. He dedicated himself two fights removed from his TKO loss to Tony Margarito, and he comes up with the win that he so desperately needed. David Estrada, you saw him there. And now Kermit Central. He can breathe again. Central answers questions that he needed to answer. Not only for us, not only for the fans, but for himself. Cintron had a 21 to 4 connected finish in that 10th round. Let's go back and look at that 10th round. And again, you're going to see distance, you're going to see range, and you're going to see your right hand. Catching Estrada with full extension. And don't discount those body shots early, how much they took out. And you can see at the end of the fight here, Cintron going downstairs going upstairs, jumping on his man, forcing the referee to step in. One more look. Again, he's already been hurt, Estrada. The right uppercut comes in. A little work downstairs, a little work upstairs. A lot of time left. The referee knew that Centrone was dangerous. He knew Estrada was hurt. He said, that's enough. What a celebration for Kermit Cintron, the new Kermit Cintron, back on track, ready to resume his career as a true contending championship-level welterweight. It didn't take long for him to bounce back. Kermit Cintron, 26 years old, now 26 wins. And that was impressive. We will come back and try to talk to Kermit Cintro. The big win on Wednesday Night Fights. He does it with the TKO win. Heels of his TKO win over David Estrada. Boy, I know that had to mean the world to you, Kermit. Yeah, that was a great, a hell of a fight. You know, uh, he gave it all he had. I gave it all I had. Uh, you know, I was trying new things with uh, what Ma Amanda Stewart uh, was teaching me. I was, you know, eight to nine weeks in training camp, you know, and I knew I was focusing that, you know, in the camp. It was a hell of a fight, you know. Um, I knew uh, that I was going to uh, catch him eventually, and I did. You know, I, I thought I was going to have him out of there in the sixth, seventh round. But, you know, he lasted to the tenth round, and, you know, I just caught him uh, with a perfect shot. It was such a good fight that it's worthy of another look, and I'd love to get your thoughts of the highlights of this fight as we go through it because there was a real ebb and flow to this fight. Things started off pretty solid for you, but he was game and set a big pace out of the gate. 
was moving around, I knew he was going to put the pressure on me. But, you know, he gave me a hell of a fight, you know. I gave him a credit, you know. It was tough. Uh, it, was a, it was a good fight, man. It was, you know, one of my best fights to date. Uh, you know, there's still things I have to uh, work on. Um, but, you know, eventually with Manny Stewart training with him, I will get that. Kermit, you know, we all look at your right-hand power. We all look at the headshots that you landed throughout the fight and you stopped the fight with. But you landed some devastating body shots that I think had a lot to do with this win tonight. You know, I was watching uh, when uh, he fought uh, Shane Mosley. You know, Shane Mosley hurt him to the body. And I was trying to, you know, set him up with my jab and use my jab and hook him to the body with the same arm. But, you know, uh, I was a little, he was a little awkward in the beginning, but, you know, I started using it, uh, you know, <clears throat> Javen, you know, my assistant trainer, you know, he was just telling me what to do, you know, and eventually I just got up to it, you know, and uh, I just used to what, you know, he, he taught me. Kermit, there was so much made of you, all the hype heading into that ESPN pay-per-view last year. How much better of a fighter are you today just based on the maturity and the experiences that you've been through compared to where you stood last April? You know, uh, back then, like I said it to, um, to you guys before, I said that, you know, uh, physically I was there, but mentally I wasn't. I wasn't prepared for the fight at all. Um, you know, uh, there was a lot of drama going on in my personal life, uh, management. Um, you know, I got a whole brand new team. You know, I'm more focused. And, you know, you, you, you can see it tonight. You know, um, you know, I got head, you know, with the, I, got, I think I got head body for the shot and caught me. But, you know, like I said, you know, I, my focus is what kept, kept me in, in the fight. Kermit, any bad voices come into that head during the course of the fight and you just use your experience from the Margarita fight and you just chase those bad voices out of your head during the course of the tonight? Yeah, I, I train hard for this fight, you know. Um, that fight with Margarito, you know, uh, I watched it a couple times. Um, you know, it wasn't me. I know it was for sure. Did it wasn't any me. of the ghosts from that fight visit you tonight, and you that, had to that, chase them? You know them? what? That fight, uh, that loss, did me some good. You know, uh, I went back to the gym and, and trained, trained really hard. You know, I uh, uh, got my eyes, my eyes open more, uh, and you know, just the focus in this, that I have. You know, the positive people that I have around me now. That's what's helping me. Did it take losing that fight to win this fight? Did it take losing that fight and going through what you went through and learned about yourself to win this fight against a tough guy? You know, Mike Garrido, a hell of a fighter. You know, he's a champion. I lost to a champion. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's a different fight from today. You know, uh, that fight did me good. You know, I uh, learned from it. You know, I, had, I got more experience. If I felt what it is to be in there uh, for the championship um, title. And, you know, and I took that to this fight, you know, uh, more focused and knowing that I had the experience of going, you know, 12 rounds or a fight that was scheduled for 20 rounds uh, against the WBO champ, uh, Antonio Margarito. And that's, that, you know, that, that fight helped me. Obviously, Margarito Mayweather, the big name, is going to be squaring off in the welterweight division. We'll give you a chance here. Now that you have this statement win, how do you want the rest of this year to look? Who do First you want of all, next? I want to say I'm back. <laughs> And, you know, I'm just going to take this fight, you know, uh, spend some time with my family. You know, um, I was out for a long time for my family. And, you know, I'm just going to give it, you know, take this week, maybe next week off, and then get back, you know, on, on schedule and training. And uh, we'll go from there. My promoter is the one and my manager who are the ones that are uh, scheduled me for the next fight. All right, you could take two weeks off. But <laughs> take, do some road work after a week, though. Oh, you earned it. You earned it big time, yeah. Kermit. Congratulations. <laughs> A, a wonderful win and a highly, highly entertaining fight. Thank Kermit Cintron, the TKO win.